Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to go through an example where we will determine the bearing capacity for a shallow footing. So here we have a shallow footing which is below the depth of the surface of the soil. And we have different soil conditions on either side of the footing. So on the left side of the footing, the footing is at a depth of 0.4 meters below the surface of the soil. And at the top of the soil we have a surcharge of 20 kPa which is applied. On the right of the footing, we can see that the footing lies at a depth of 1 meter below the surface. And there's also a water table which is at a height of 0.4 meters above the base of the footing. Now we're dealing with a long strip footing here with a width of 1.5 meters. And the question is asking us to determine the maximum allowable force per meter run. So this is per unit length because we're dealing with a strip footing which could be placed on the footing, assuming a factor of safety of 3. Now if you note here, we're given two sets of data for the cohesion and angle of friction. So we have an undrained cohesion of 30 kPa, and an undrained angle of friction of 0, as well as a drained cohesion of 5 kPa, and a drained angle of friction of 25 degrees. So this means that we have to consider both an undrained analysis and a drained analysis. Now in the case of an undrained analysis, The Hansen's equation for the bearing capacity of a footing actually changes to this form. So QU equals to 5.14 multiplied by CU 1 plus SCU, so that's a shape factor, plus DCU, the depth factor, minus ICU, the inclination factor, minus BCU, the base factor, minus GCU, the ground factor, plus Q0, that's the uniform pressure at the base of the footing. Now because we have a long strip footing, we don't have to worry about the shape factor. And because the load is acting normal to the surface of the footing, we don't have to worry about an inclination factor. And because we have a flat base, and also, that the ground, also because we have a flat ground surface, we don't have to worry about the base and ground factors. So as a result, our equation simplifies down to this form. So QU is equal to 5.14 CU 1 plus DCU plus QO. Now to find DCU, we need to look at the table, which contains all the equations for our factors. So DCU is here, and it's equal to 0 0.4 multiplied by the ratio of the, de the depth to the base of the footing. So from the table, DCU is equal to 0 0.4 multiplied by D divided by B where D is equal to where D is equal to 0 0.4 and we take 0 0.4 because this factor will result in a lower value for the bearing capacity and we're going for the lowest possible case in this situation so 0 0.4 and the base sorry the width is 1.5 meters. So that's 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 1.5. So therefore, DCU is equal to 0 0.107. So next, we need to determine QO. So QO is just the pressure which is felt at the base of the footing. And because we have two different soil conditions, we need to determine Q0 at this point, as well as at this point. And we'll take the minimum of the, these two values. So QO is equal to the minimum. Now let's look at the left side of the footing first. Okay, so first we have the surcharge at the surface, so that's 20 
plus the depth 0.4 multiplied by the total unit weight of the soil, which is 18. 20 plus 0.4 multiplied by 18. And on the right hand side, we have a depth of 1 meter. And this is just multiplied by the total unit weight. Now we don't have to worry about the water table because this is the undrained analysis. So we're dealing with total stress. So 1 times 18. So this works out to be 27.2 and 18. So that gives us a minimum uniform pressure of 18 kPa. So now we can find QU, which is our bearing capacity of the footing, 5.14 multiplied by, so our undrained cohesion was 30. Multiply by 1 plus our depth factor of 0 0.107 plus 18. So that gives us a bearing capacity of 188.7 kPa. So now let's look at the drained ana analysis. So because we only have to worry about the depth factor, the bearing capacity equation simplifies down to this form. Now in the drained case, our angle of friction is 25 degrees. So let's now determine our bearing capacity factors. Sorry, there's a term missing here. So we go to this table, phi is equal to 25, so NC is 20.7, NQ is 10.7, N gamma is 6.8, and we'll also be using this term, and you'll see why in a second. So NC 20.7, NQ 10.7, N gamma is equal to 6.8. And 2 tan phi, 1 minus sine phi squared, this is equal to 0 0.31. Now we need to determine our depth factors, dc, dq, and d gamma. So let's look at this table. These are our terms here that we need to use. Okay. from the table DC is equal to 1 plus 0 0.4 depth divided by width that's 1 plus 0 0.4 0 0.4 divided by 1.5 and that's equal to 1.107 so let me just re-clarify really something there's two different cases for the depth factors where if the depth is smaller than the width of the footing and where the depth of the footing is bigger than the width of bigger than the width of the footing so make sure you just look at this carefully so that you know which equation to use so dq is equal to 1 plus 2 tan phi 1 minus sine phi squared multiplied by d over b so that's 1 plus 0 0.31 multiplied by 0 0.4 over 1.5 
and that's 1.083. And finally, D gamma is just equal to 1. Now, uniform pressure at the base of the footing. We need to consider the pressures at either side of the footing, and this time we need to account for the water table. So on the left side, this is 20 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 18 minus 9.8, because we have the water table. So 20 plus 0 0.4, 18 minus 9.8. And on the right hand side of the footing, that's 18 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.4 times 9.8 so these work out to be 23.28 and 14.08 so therefore Q0 is equal to 14.08 KPA so now we can find QU, so that's C, which is equal to 5, multiplied by NC, which is 20.7, multiplied by DC, which is 1.107. Plus now the second part, so QO, which we found to be 14.08, multiplied by NQ, which is 10.7, and DQ, which is 1.083. And finally, the third part of the equation, 0.5 multiplied by the drained unit weight, so that's 18 minus 9.8 times the width, which is 1.5 times N gamma, which is 6.8 and D gamma, which is 1 minus 9.8 9 times 1.5 times 6.8 times 1. And all this works out to be 319.6 kPa. So now we have two values for the bearing capacity of the shallow footing. So QU is equal to the minimum. Let's go back to our first value. So 188.7. and this value we just found here, 319.6 so therefore our bearing capacity is 188.7 kPa so U here denotes our ultimate bearing capacity and we're actually, we're actually interested in the allowable bearing capacity and where we find the allowable bearing capacity, QA, we just divide our ultimate bearing capacity by our factor of safety. So that's 188.7 divided by 3. And this works out to be 62.9 kPa. And recall that the question is asking us for our maximum allowable force. So let's just call it a capital UA. To find that, you just multiply your bearing capacity, which is in a pressure form, KPA. You multiply that by the effective area. So that's 62.9 multiplied by our width, which the width of the footing, which is 1.5, multiplied by a unit length, because we have a strip footing. So that, this is just one meter here for the length. So that gives us a maximum allowable force of 
94.35 kilonewtons per meter run. And that's it for today's video. Hope this helps, guys.